Welcome to Finance, Accounting and Banking. We look at Business Studies Model Paper 2. It was done on 17th of December 2020 by Form 4 students. So we have the details, the name, index number, class, admission number, UPI number, then Paper 2 which is coded 565 and it's usually done in two and a half hours. Instructions to candidates. The first instruction is that the paper consists of six questions and you are required to answer any five questions. So you have to make a choice. The questions that will earn you more marks or maximum marks as you can. Then instruction number C, <coughs> you write your answers in the answer booklet provided. Do not bring in materials from outside. And then all questions carry equal marks. So if you decide on question number one, question number three, four, five, six, all of them will earn you 100 marks. It doesn't uh, matter which combination, but you take whatever number that you want, except that there must be five questions. If you answer six questions, you do not earn extra marks. Then, candidates, you should check the question paper to ascertain that all the pages are printed as indicated and that no questions are missing. Students must be careful such that they do not leave out any details that would make them fail. So, questions. <clears throat> Number one, highlight various functions of an office in an organization that should earn you 10 marks. So you should not give one word answers or two word answers. You should give some explanation, give some insight as to what happens in an office. So one, receiving information from internal and external sources, that is from departments, individuals, suppliers, the government, customers, etc. You can give just two sources. Then two, collecting information. This is purposeful searching for relevant information from internal and external sources as opposed to receiving information. Then we have recording information in a suitable form, number and nature of records that the organization finds fit. Four, creating records through converting the received or collected information according to the needs of the organization for keeping, acting, or use in decision-making. Five, processing or arranging information systematically so as to understand it for decision-making. Six, computation and statistical work to prepare information into a form easily understood such as graphs, charts, pictures, flow diagrams, etc., and also reports. Analyzing information to find the truth or the hidden facts so as to write reports. Next, maintenance of records for future reference. Next, retention of records, choosing between the necessary and outdated records. Next one, communication of information through supplying and distributing information to the relevant stakeholders. That can be done verbally or in writing. Another one, safeguarding a business assets or resources, among other answers. Question number 1B, 
Waithera, who sells her goods at a margin of 25%, had the following balances on 31st December 2017. Opening stock, 50,000 shillings. Purchases, 240,000 shillings. Closing stock, 30,000 shillings. Carriage inwards, 10,000 shillings. Return outwards, 15,000 shillings. Returns inwards, 5,000 shillings. So you are required, one, to calculate the net purchases, one mark. So the net purchases will be obtained from this formula. That is, purchases plus carriage inwards, less purchases returns or returns outwards. So the net purchases will be 240,000 plus 10,000 minus 15,000. And the net purchases will then be 235,000. Number two, calculate cost of sales or cost of goods sold. So, cost of goods sold can be looked at as the cost of goods available for sale minus closing stock or opening stock plus purchases less returns outwards, add carriage inwards, and less closing stock. So our figures will be 50,000 plus 235,000 less 30,000 and you will arrive at 255,000 shillings. Then calculate sales. We know that margin is gross profit over sales. Markup is gross profit over cost of sales and cross profit is markup over cost of sales. So the margin is 25% or a quarter. Then markup will be 1 over 4 minus 1, which will be a third. So going back to our sales, sales is equal to cost of sales plus gross profit. And our sales here will be brought about by markup plus gross profit. And our markup here is a third plus gross profit. So our gross profit will be a third of cost of, uh, uh, cost of sales, which we found to be 255,000. So our gross profit will be 85,000 shillings. So our sales will be 255,000 plus 55,000, which will be 340,000. Then we are told to calculate gross profit. Gross profit is sales minus cost of sales, which will be 340,000 minus 255,000, which gives us 85,000 shillings. We move to question number two. Explain any 10 characteristics of money as a medium of exchange. So you are explaining the characteristics. You name the characteristic and explain it. So money should be stable in value so as to instill confidence for a long period of time or so that it does not fluctuate its value unnecessarily. Two, money should be recognized easily by all away from other items. Three, money should be malleable to mint the coins as the government likes. Four, money should not be easily forged to instill confidence to citizens. Five, money should be portable so as to carry it around easily and without getting tired. Six, money should be durable to avoid unnecessary replacement costs. Seven, money should be acceptable by all citizens as a means of payment. Eight, money should be homogeneous in outlook. If you look at a coin of, let's say, one shilling and another one, they should look alike. Ten or twenty shilling coin should look like another 20 shilling coin. 
Nine, money should be divisible into small amounts to facilitate change or balance or buying of small valued items. That's why we have coins and notes of various denominations. And ten, money should be scarce to maintain a high value. Question number 2b. Prepare Lagarde's balance sheet from the following transactions, 10 marks. Creditors, 22,000. Furniture, 10,000. Stock, 11,000. Capital, 40,000. Cash, 4,000. And debtors, 6,000. Bank, 31,000. Lagarde's balance sheet is at 31st October 2010. This is a date that we have fixed because the question does not have a date. So you must have a date for your balance sheet or any other final record. So on one side we have assets, on the other side capital and liabilities. So these are assets. We've mixed them. Cash 4,000, bank 31,000, data 6,000, stock 11,000, furniture 10,000. And then creditors, 22,000 and capital, 40,000. So the total for capital and liabilities is 62,000 shillings, which is also the same figure for total assets, 62,000. We move on to number three. I'll claim five drawbacks of using consumer price index as a measure of inflation. So, one, difficulty to determine what should constitute the basket of commodities to use in consumer price index. So, in a country, we may decide that we will take a few items, but which are those items? Mostly, those items are those that are bought in large quantities and that are bought by many people, but which ones? In one region, you may find that this item is taken by a lot of people as opposed to another region. So, there is difficulty in what will constitute the commodities to use in computation of CPI. Two, difficulty to determine a typical household or family and their characteristics. So, one family or families in a certain region may have similar characteristics but different characteristics from families in another region. So differences in prices of commodities from region to region due to distance and demand. Four, difficulty in selecting the base year. Which year do you start to uh, calculate your inflation? Five, prices vary from year to year causing confusion. Six, difficulty to ensure that the correct weights are allocated to each and every item. If, let's say, unga is given weight four, if you have four items, which will be weight two? Is it sugar or salt or what? It depends. Seven, lack of accurate data or prices and consumer expenditures you know you are taking a few items and from a few families it may not reflect the accurate data or information as expected some families may have preference for some products while others may not have preference for the same Eight, changing tastes and preferences of consumers which change their pattern. This time you may find that some families are taking this type of detergent. After six months, they start taking or using or consuming another type. Those changes in tastes and preferences may alter the basket of commodities to use together with the prices because different prices different items have different prices nine price fluctuations within a given period and cpi uses end year prices you may find that after every three months we have price fluctuation either increase or decrease but at the end of the year you may find that the price that uh, uh, we started the year with may be the same for a certain commodity or maybe less or even more and probably throughout the year the price was more than the CPI price that we are taking. Question number 3b. K 
Kenya has always intensified its campaign on population control. State challenges that can be caused by an increasing population. Ten marks. There will be a strain on the available social amenities because more people require more roads, more social halls, more hospitals, more schools, etc. There will be a strain on the same. So, number two, citizens will experience low standards of living because you'll find that they are sharing a lot of resources or amenities and they may not enjoy as much as possible. Remember, standards of living is a factor that has an element of enjoyment. Three, most people migrate to towns looking for jobs, hence overcrowding, because not many people would want to stay in rural areas and they have a false notion that towns will have jobs for them. Four, high dependency ratio, where many youths depend on adults or a few adults for their living. Five, it brings about an imbalance in demand and supply. We have a lot of consumers, whereas the supply or manufacturing population is few. Six, food shortage will ensue due to many mouths that aren't working. Seven, increase in crime rate due to competition for scarce resources and jobs. Eight, there is high environmental degradation due to harvesting or harnessing resources to cater for the needs of a high population. Nine, exhaustion of available resources in a country trying to feed and also cater for the needs of that high population that is not really working. 10. High cost of living will be experienced by citizens because not many people are working and the few that are working will spend a lot to feed and cater for the needs of the uh, less working but many youths. Question number four. A. Differentiate between economic growth and economic development. Eight marks. So economic growth and economic development. So economic growth is a quantitative increase in size of a country's national income. For example, the GDP, roads, income levels, etc. But economic development is both quantitative and qualitative increment of well-being of a country's economy. Where many people enjoy what is coming in. So, under economic growth, it doesn't ensure reduced inequalities in income distribution. A few may be earning, but under economic development ensures reduction in inequalities in income distribution. Many people will be earning. Under economic growth, it embarks only on increment of a country's national income. And economic development embarks on increment of real output per capita or per person. Four, can be measured or economic growth can be measured at the rate of GDP changes from year to year. But economic development it is measured in terms of welfare of life that is improved living standards of everybody. Economic growth cannot be can be there or not. Or there can be economic development or not and economic growth. But there cannot be economic development without economic growth. Question number 4b. The following graph relates to a product called Simba. We have the price y-axis and 
quantity x axis so this shift is a supply shift or supply curve shifting to the right or increase in supply of products or increase in production of products without necessarily increasing the price so the question is explain any six factors that may have caused the situation above 12 marks there may be new and better production methods resulting into high productivity so you produce more but you don't increase the prices reduced taxes that may assist companies to buy more raw materials that they will use in production that may not necessarily mean that there is a decrease in price of products the suppliers will have more money to spend and supply or manufacture more increased quarters thus allowing more products into an economy for better and efficient distribution methods five future expectation of a price drop that are to avoid low prices supply in future six increased government subsidies making the cost of production to fall seven entry of new farms in the market that increase production or supply eight increased production of complementary or jointly used products nine increased production of alternatives 11 cheap transport costs hence efficiency in sourcing for raw materials question number five onyango is a prospective entrepreneur who intends to start a farm in a certain area so what are the factors that would influence products he would produce so these factors are one productivity profitability of products such that they will meet less competition two availability of resources raw materials machines finance three demand or market for products gaining and retaining loyal customers four cost of producing or manufacturing the product should be reasonable five government policy controlling or guiding production and distribution of a product six long-term prospects of the business or venture to be sustainable seven safety of the products fit for human use or consumption eight access to market that will make products reach all consumers in time number 5b discuss any five uses of national income statistics in a country 10 marks these statistics act as indicators of standards of living like per capita income two they are used to compare standards of living between different countries hence giving an indicator of the development level or well-being and satisfaction levels of citizens three helps to assess or evaluate the performance of the economy over time so as to check progress and balance development for citizens four assist the government to plan the economy as regards the areas to improve on grow or concentrate on five helps the government and business people to make informed investment decisions six helps a country to create jobs and set up industries that will help the country to grow seven it is used to determine the dependency ratio and which sectors to improve to rectify such a problem eight helps to create jobs through careful analysis of the industries that should be established nine 
to reduce the gap between the poor and the rich. And 10, so as to help the government to manage the public debt. Question number six. A. Mwangi intends to take out an insurance cover. Explain five factors that will determine the amount of premium he would pay. This has not been uh, given whether it is general or life assurance. So these are the likely points. The type of cover will determine the period and time to take to pay premiums. Two, his job would determine the risks involved, thus the amount of premiums. Three, his health status will determine how long he is expected to live or not. Four, his ability to pay will determine how much he is willing or able to pay. And five, his residence or neighborhood risks will determine the cover or premiums. Question number six B. Small farms always exist despite competition from large farms. Explain five reasons for this existence. Ten marks. One, the market is large to accommodate small and big businesses. Two, if the product dictates offering by small farms, for example, shoe repairs, hairdressing, and other businesses that must be small businesses. Three, belief or need by investors that a small farm is more manageable. Four, high cost of production would not allow some businesses to expand. Five, need for or need by investors to retain control of the business. Six, government regulations that may not allow some businesses to expand. Seven, simplicity of an organization that would dictate the size. Eight, small farms are more flexible, hence the owner can change tact with ease or strategies with ease. Nine, small farms allow quick decision making, hence preferred by many investors. Ten, the government supports small farms than large farms with loans or subsidies and such. Question number six C. Nafula deals with or in the distribution of milk. Explain five factors that may determine her choice of distribution channel. One, perishability of milk would require a fast channel to reach the factory or even the market. Two, milk requires special containers to transport and store to avoid contamination. Three, the farm requires a lot of resources to reach customers in regard to economies of scale so that they save on transportation costs. Four, milk requires refrigeration to avoid going bad easily. Five, collecting milk and distributing it requires well-funded distributors, agents, or intermediaries to reach the market or the factory in time. Six, milk is a commonly used commodity in many households, hence requires very efficient distribution channels like in shops, hotels, schools, etc. Thank you. Remember to subscribe and like my videos or channel in YouTube, which is Eddie Carries. Edward Karyuki Matenge, Karyuki Eddie 2010 at gmail.com.